Imagine almost losing your life in a call at your job as a firefighter. After your friend saved you, you owe him a favor. However, you wouldn't imagine what would come your friend asks you to marry him, as the widower was unable to include the children in the life insurance policy because it was overdue. However, you wouldn't imagine that you would have to go through a trial to prove that you are a genuine couple. I am Lancelot and in today's movie recap we will watch I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. The film begins with Chuck and Larry playing basketball with the rest of the group at the fire department, where they both work. Chuck is known to be with several women, and a pair of sisters go to the scene to fight over the firefighter however, the two are interrupted when the siren rings, warning that there is a call. On the way, the team meets the new member, a tall and strong man who was transferred however, he does not open up to any of the colleagues, which puts fear in the staff. Chuck and Larry discover at the scene that they need to enter the burning building, as a lady warns them that her son is inside and begs them to help her. The two enter and manage to rescue him. At home, Larry is looking after his children and is surprised when his son says he is going to audition for the school theater. The next day, the man needs to go to the agency to change the name of the beneficiary in case he dies as Larry's wife is now gone, he wants his children's names instead of hers. However, he discovers that the deadline for this has already passed, and he would only be able to change if he married again. At their job, after the team puts out a burning building, Chuck and Larry are sweeping the place, but something happens. Chuck falls from the top floor, and Larry, to prevent the rest from collapsing on his unconscious friend, protects him by placing his body on top of him. When the two wake up in the hospital, they'll be fine. When Larry's children come to visit him, they are saddened, as their mother recently passed away there. Later, when they are discharged, Chuck discovers that his friend thinks about leaving the fire department because of his children he is afraid that something will happen, but the man says that he will not let him do that and they will think of something. Larry stays up until dawn at 4 am, the man goes to Chuck's house to talk about an idea he had recently, but that will help him. He asks his friend to marry him, so the man could inherit Larry's benefit if he died and would be responsible for the children through the common law marriage. Chuck thinks it's crazy, yet he's the only one Larry trusts with it. In the end, the man agrees, and the next day, the two go to the registry office in disguise to sign the union document. A few days later, an investigator to verify the veracity of the union appears at Larry's house. The two try to pass the image that they are a couple however, only in the coming months will they know if they have convinced the investigator. The next day, they go to a lawyer to find out the risks in case the state thinks they are lying. She explains that they sent an initial investigator however, if they get a visit from one named Clint, it means they're on to them. These investigations began after they found out from a couple of friends that one needed the other's health plan, and for one of the men to be able to use it, the other married his friend. When they were discovered, the one who had the initial plan was fired, and the two served sentences in prison, including a third party who was a friend of the two and found out from them. The man was accused of not having reported the fraud to the authorities. The lawyer gives advice to the two leave clues for the investigators, suddenly go to Canada, and legalize the marriage by getting married in a chapel. And that's what they decide to do however, the taxi driver expresses disgust at their love, and the two fight with the man. Arriving at the chapel, they agree on how the ceremony will be, and then there is the party with only those present. The two did not invite anyone they knew to the event. In the following days, Chuck moves into Larry's house, and although the man is not used to having children or living with someone else, the four get along well as a family. Chuck discovers that Larry still keeps his late wife's clothes in the closet and that no one has ever slept in her bed he will be the first. The days follow, and in one of them, Larry is in front of his house when he notices a man messing with his garbage. It is the investigator, Clint. The investigator says they don't look like a couple that's just analyzing the house trash, so Chuck and Larry start taking care of even what they throw in the trash and what they buy at the market. At the establishment, Chuck bumps into Alex, the couple's lawyer. She invites them to a fundraising event. Larry at home goes through a struggle. One day the two flirted with the postman to disguise when Chuck was talking about the neighbor who was on the man's side however, the postman, when knocking on Larry's door, says that when he wants one more company in the marriage, it is available. At the event where Alex asked the two, 
The lawyer's brother believes that Chuck is the more feminine of the couple, which later helps him spend time with Alex, whom he finds very beautiful and attractive. The two have fun at the party however, on the way out, they are faced with a group of oppressors, carrying signs and speeches with the aim of offending the people at the event. Chuck can't stand to see his new friends sad, so as the leader of the group directing the offense decides to continue, the man gets into a physical fight, and everyone at the event cheers him on. The next day, the captain calls the two into his office. The man doesn't usually get involved in his team's personal lives, but he says that if they are setting up, he will be the first to report it. Later, the lawyer calls Chuck and invites him to do a women's day, go shopping, etc. Of course, the man accepts, considering the huge crush he has on her. On career day at the kids' school, Larry learns that his parents have decided to leave him out of this year's scout events because he came out, which results in the two fighting in the middle of the school with the kids in the back adoring it. Even Larry's son defends him from a bully. Meanwhile, Chuck is at Alex's house the two got caught in the rain, and because she thinks the man doesn't like women, she changes clothes in front of him without worrying. She even lets him have it there, claiming she doesn't have silicone to prove it. The next day at the fire station, everyone is playing basketball as usual, but when Chuck enters the court, the men stop and say they don't want to play with him anymore. The new member of the team saw what happened and went to Chuck he hugs him and also reveals his sexuality. The man says that Chuck and Larry gave him strength to open up and be who he really is, and he asks for his help in telling your parents. Later, Alex makes a friendship bracelet with Chuck, and the two continue talking. The man says that if he liked women, he would be in love with the lawyer, and she kisses him. Despite being reluctant afterwards and knowing it was wrong, Alex does it again. Meanwhile, Larry picks up Clint again on his street he is playing ball with his kids, and Tori ends up letting slip to the investigator that Chuck is with the lawyer he has a crush on. This makes the next day a reason for the two friends to fight, and Chuck gets a little heavy talking about Larry's late wife and how he keeps her things in the same place. Later, the captain calls the two to his office, and he delivers the undersigned that his teammates signed asking for the transfer of the two. The man will not transfer anyone, but now they will work in separate shifts. Larry gets really mad about this and decides to talk to everyone. He reminds everyone of what Chuck has done for them. When Larry arrives the next morning, he catches his friend sleeping on the floor of the children's room with a children's book. The man believes it's time to pack up his wife's things, and when Chuck sees him doing so, he apologizes for the things he said. Then the two help the little one rehearse for his big test at school. However, the moment of joy is short-lived, as Alex calls the two, due to an article that came out about all the women Chuck slept with recently before and after being married to Larry, which would help to prove that the marriage is a farce. Now they participate in every community event possible, so that will factor in their favor at the trial. On the day of the judgment, there is a huge crowd outside, some against and some in favor of the two. Inside the place, they are faced with the surprise of their colleagues present, and they apologize for the way they were acting. During the trial, Clint interrogates the two together, each separately, and also Larry's children everything seems to be in favor of the couple. Including when Tori says she sees Chuck as a mother because he looks like a girl. Clint, before finishing, requests that the two kiss each other. They are almost done when the captain enters. The man says that of course the two broke the law however, Chuck was helping his friend, who recently lost his wife. The two supported each other and thus ended up forming a family. The two also influenced their teammate to come out. In the end, Larry and Chuck confessed that what the captain said was true, so as it is in the law, the two would be arrested. However, all of his colleagues began to accuse each other, including the captain of the co-authors in the story, for knowing and not having denounced, and thus, all were arrested. Inside the cell, the two notice that a crowd has formed outside, asking them to release the couple. And the counselor proposes an agreement with them, who admit that they are guilty of the fraud and that they do work to raise funds. The firefighters end up making a calendar with racy photos. Two months later, there is the wedding of the assumed colleague and Alex's brother in the same chapel where Chuck and Larry had been married. At the party, Chuck takes the opportunity to apologize to Alex and discovers that she is also still wearing the bracelet they had made, just like him. 
The two end up hitting it off, and Larry, for the first time, moves on to talk to another woman. What did you guys think of this movie? I hope you enjoyed the summary. Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe. If you like the video, like it and share it to help me. To the next.